Hey, what's up, guys? Coach Bobby here. Happy Saturday. What's today? Today is the January 19th, 2019. Uh, happy Saturday. I uh, got my workout in today with my boot camp class. Got after it today. Did a, a very complex, very uh, challenging uh, workout today. That was great. The intensity was high. The, the energy was high. So I'm very appreciative of that. It's about quarter to two. Uh, and I'm uh, about to go take my daughter and my wife uh, to go get some food in a little bit. My first food of the day, as you guys know, uh, I do fast. I intermittent fast. I fast uh, every day for the most part. Um, I, I use the combination of exogenous ketones in the mornings, um, bulletproof coffee uh, after that. Right, mid morning, late morning, and then around my trainings, uh, I do amino acids. So the combination of those three I use uh, as a bridge. So it's a quasi fast, uh, but I take in no real food um, and certainly no carbohydrate or sugar or glucose uh, before about three o'clock on just about every day. Uh, and then I have my eating window from three to ten. So. That's a summary, a review of how I eat. I have my Bulletproof coffee still. Uh, I'm at a point now where my body understands uh, what it's supposed to do. It, it oxidizes body fat uh, just about every day. Um, and I never uh, put my body in a position where I fill up on glycogen, on stored glycogen, forcing my body to store body fat. So, so now I just basically, I can do that every day. Um, and so I can burn fat regularly, um, never putting on body fat and continuing to burn lean muscle, have energy, um, more than enough energy because my body has, my body creates ketones, but I also, um, drink exogenous ketones. So I never go through any of that, uh, uh, those, those withdrawals or those symptoms that you get when you go through, uh, drastic cuts in your in your carbohydrate intake without having anything to replace that in terms of uh, ketones. So that's that, that's a summary. Uh, what I wanna talk about today quickly uh, is the, um, the, the desire to be better, right? And having an urgency in your mindset to get better, right? And I and I, and I I would say that one of my best tools, one of the the biggest reasons I've been successful in just about every area uh, that I've that I that I've had achievement, right? Whether that's getting a bachelor's degree in college, whether that's playing football in college, whether that's getting an MBA in business school, uh, getting into business school, whether that's using that to build a career as a chief financial officer. Um, and from the standpoint of, of what we do here with Coach Bobby, whether that is trying to build lean muscle and lose body fat, it's the urgency that I approach stuff with. And I wanna talk a bit about, about that. And so people who, who know me, uh, going back to high school, going back to college, they know when I, when I have my mind set on being better, or being great at something, it's it's a it's a moment to moment, hour to hour, day to day chase to be great, right? And I don't let anybody, you know, get in the way of that, right? Friends, family. If I want to be great, outside of being rude, um, I do what I have to do to be great to chase what my dream is. And a perfect example of that that I thought about before doing this video was was in football. So when, when you play football, the weeks go by fast. Those games come up quick. And typically you might get, you know, the first day back after a game is just conditioning, right? And then some film study. And then you go, and then re rehabilitation of any injuries you may have, may have sustained either in the game or have had the whole year. And so you do that the first day or two, of, you know, of the week. So Monday, Sunday, Monday maybe. And then you implement the game plan. And then you have practice and then you, you know, you practice one or two days and then you wind down to make sure you're fresh for the next game. So that week 
during the season, you only have, you know, maybe two opportunities to really get your body right, get your mind right, get any any specific game planning right, any preparation right before the next game. So there's an urgency to that, right? Because you have limited time to get ready to play that game on Saturday afternoon. And so when I when I was playing, and people who who watched this video who remember that can probably attest to it. But if 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 there was a player who was red shirting, right, and he wasn't gonna play that week, and we were doing drills like Tuesday or Wednesday, usually we'll, we'll have a segment of practice where you do one on one drills where the DBs are guarding or covering the wide receivers, right? So. You know, all the all the all the defensive backs and cornerbacks are out there. All the receivers are out there, whether you're playing or not, whether you're red shirting or not, whether you're new, whether you're a starter, whatever. They're all out there getting reps in. And I would typically get as many as I could, right? Especially as I got I got older and I was starting. So I would if I if I if I did a repetition and then it came out, as soon as I recovered and was ready to go again, I would basically pull somebody out of the drill if they weren't, you know, also going to be playing a lot. And 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 sometimes in a nice way, say, look, I, I'm going to take your rep, right? I'm going to take your rep. Or if there's a receiver that was either, either really good on our team, a starter, or may, may have had a skill set that I might face in the game, right? I would make sure I face that person. So if it was his turn to go, I would replace whoever the cornerback was. And sometimes that resulted in some conflict, right? Some arguments. But to me, I was getting ready to play. And this other person, other guy, who could have been a great friend, if he was redshirting or wasn't gonna play a lot, um, I would make I would make sure that I got his rep to get better because the sense of urgency was there. Right? So that was a long time ago. But that but that underscores and illustrates how important it was to me to not waste the moments, the precious moments, the limited moments that I had to get better. And so you and so I took that same concept and I and I, I moved it forward. So whether I was carrying carrying around books to study for my MBA MBA test, you know, my GMAT. Um, so if I was in line or at a stoplight, I could read. It was the urgency to get better, to grow, to learn, to get ready for a test. Whether it was a workout that I made sure I wasn't in the gym playing around because I, I wanted to take that moment and capture it, right? And make sure I didn't waste it. And so now as I coach people, the biggest step you must take in this journey is to treat every workout like it is the workout that's going to get you better, right? To treat every repetition you do like it's the repetition that's going to get you better. Right, to treat every moment along this journey like it is the moment that's going to get you right. All right, and if you don't do that, right, even though even though you're going to have more workouts, this is not the last workout. But if you don't treat it as if it is the last workout, then your mindset won't be right every time you go. If you don't treat this day like it's the the day you must address your your eating habits, then you will never get to that point. If you don't take upon yourself, your mindset, that mindset that I'm going to make sure that I capture all these moments. And so one analogy that I love to use and, 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 I, and I call it, and I'll always say to my, my students and my athletes that I train that one of my biggest assets is I don't waste chops of the tree. I don't waste opportunities to get better. I don't waste workouts. I don't waste study sessions. I don't waste moments with my my family, my son, my daughter, my wife. I don't waste them, right? And that and 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 when you do that over and over again, when you build a habit of not wasting the moments, then after a year, after two years, now that journey you, you're, you're taking, you've gotten somewhere. And so the analogy I love to use is you're chopping down a tree, and so your your dream, your vision. And it could be anything. It could be a, a dream to be a professional dancer. It could be a dream to be a doctor. It could be a dream to be a millionaire. It could be a dream, in our case, to lose 50 pounds, right? Or to bench press 300 pounds or whatever, or to play college football or to play college basketball, whatever it is. 
Whatever that dream is, it's like a tree. And the bigger the, the, the dream, the thicker the tree, right? Like a big redwood. And so the skill sets you have currently represent whatever your cutting device is. Sharp axe, butter knife, steak knife, saw, whatever it is. Right? The more you have, the more abilities you have, the sharper that object. Right? Some call it, like, in terms of like working out, some call it like, you know, you know, your DNA, right? Whatever you have naturally, right? Some people have a better DNA, some don't, some have a limited DNA. But you still have the opportunity to chop down this tree. You still have the opportunity to lose 50 pounds. It might be harder. Your cutting device might be duller, but it's still possible. And so you have this tree, right? And you have this, this cutting device, right? Part of that is your, is your drive, your passion, right? So, so if you don't apply that correctly, urgently, it's going to take longer to cut that tree down, if ever. And so, and, and when you compound that with the fact that you only have so many chances to chop at this tree, that makes the desire and the urgency even greater. It should, at least. It should make it greater, right? Because if I told you that your dream of, 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 of going to med school or your dream of one day being able to take your shirt off at the pool or your dream of being a professional dancer on Broadway, or your dream of whatever it is. If I told you that that that, that, that dream is represented by a big-ass tree, a big-ass redwood tree, right? And I'm going to give you four opportunities a week to swing this axe at that tree, right? And so on Monday, I tell you, come in, and I give you the axe. You get one swing at it that day. And whatever you do is your swing for the day. Right? And that's say, okay, what? That was your swing? Okay, give me the axe back. I'll see you again Wednesday. And on Wednesday, I give it to you again. Here's your axe. Take your swing. Right? Give it back. On Friday, same thing. So so that, that illustrates that no matter what you do, if you waste those opportunities and give a haphazard, right, a half-assed swing, right, that's going to mean the process, the journey is that much longer before that tree comes down. So you have to take every chance you get. Every time I give you the ax in my class, every time someone gives you an ax at a study session, every time you get an ax from life to approach your dream, you have to swing with everything you got. With everything you got. I don't care if it's a butter knife. I don't care if it's, if it's dull. Whatever you have, you have to swing it as hard as you can every time you address that tree, every time you attack that tree. Right, because the tree is going to require so many chops to come down. Right, that's what it is. Right, this big redwood is going to require X number of chops, period. X number of good chops. It might be a thousand chops. You might need a thousand twenty chops before your dream is attainable. Right, and oftentimes that analogy works because you want to be fit by that cruise in July. Right, that's a thousand chops, for example. You might only have the opportunity to, to, to swing 800 times. So you're already behind the eight ball. You're already limited how much, how much time you have, how many chops available you have before you want that goal, before you want that tree to come down. So you might already not have enough chops as it is. And you're going to waste them because it's a little painful, because your hands hurt, because your arms hurt. You're going to waste them because you're tired. Right? So my secret is simple. I don't know anything special about training and about nutrition. Right? I know more than most. I apply it differently than most. But at the end of the day, it's not rocket science. Right? What I do better than most is I don't waste opportunities to get better. Right? And, and I don't let people around me allow me to waste them. Right? So my boys know, my boys from college know I'm away for a weekend with them, I'm chopping at the tree. If that means I'm going to miss breakfast with them, then they know by now I'll see you at lunch. Right? If I'm in a class on a Saturday and I'm working out with the class, they know I'm a different animal. Because now it's my workout we fucking around with. Not just yours. Right? With your workout, I'm just coaching you. I might let you slide a little bit. I might. But if I'm working out with you, I'll be damned if we if we were ruining my workout. We ain't going to ruin my workout. 
right? Because this is one of four chops I get a week. I'm not wasting 25% of my chops on anybody, on anybody. Not you, not my wife, not my kids, anybody, right? And if you want to get better in life, you have to pre yeah you have you have to prioritize and and take as an urgent matter your chops if bringing down that tree is important to you if attaining that body you want is important to you if going to med school is important to you if playing in the NBA is important to you I'm not saying it should be important to you I don't it, I don't care I don't really care I'm gonna love you regardless I'm gonna love you if you're 200 pounds I'm gonna love you if you're a high school dropout. As long as you're a good person, I'm going to still love you. All I'm saying is if you want that, like you say you do, it takes urgency. Right? Especially if you're not already 6'1 and want to be a basketball player like my son. Especially if you're already behind the eight ball and want to go to Hawaii, right, in six months. And now you're 20 pounds overweight. Especially if, if that's the case. Right? So if you're already behind the eight ball... And it's already been a struggle for you. And you deem it already harder for you than most. Why would you waste chops when it's limited? When time to get better is limited. All right. So the takeaway from this message is it's urgent. Right. You don't have time. You don't have any more time to waste. Right. You know it. I know it. you don't have time. There might not be a tomorrow. Like in Rocky 3, my favorite movie with the whole series. But one of my favorite scenes in, the, in that series is Rocky III when they're training, right? And Apollo's trying to get Rocky ready to fight Clubber Lang, right? And Rocky's mind is all messed up because he lost his, his trainer. He lost Mickey. And, and, and Apollo's trying to get him ready because he's going into a fight with a bulldog who don't care about Mickey. You don't care what the reason is. You can't get your mind right. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be in the ring ready to kill you if you ain't ready. So Apollo's trying to get him right, and they train him on the beach, and they and, and they in the pool, and Rocky's like going through this thing, lethargic, and he says, you know, he, you know, Apollo yells at him, "What's wrong with you, Rock? What's wrong? We gotta do this." And Rocky says, "We'll do it tomorrow." And Apollo says, "There ain't no tomorrow. There ain't no tomorrow." All right? So Google that on YouTube or YouTube it. Right? Right? Rocky three. There ain't no tomorrow scene. Right, because because in life you have to approach it like there ain't no tomorrow. You ain't promised tomorrow's workout. And again, if you need a hundred workouts and you have a hundred left, you can't waste this one. Right? If you need a hundred study sessions to pass the